Okay, now, Stefan, you mentioned uh, primaries and secondaries on the wings. Can you explain to, to me and, to, and the viewers here which are which? Well, actually, it's, it's, uh, I'm glad you asked that question because not only are the primaries and secondaries important to learn, it's, it's actually uh, really a plus if we learn all the, all the feather groups. But I can, I can briefly go over them. The primaries are the last 10 on, the, on, a, on a bird's wing. And every bird will have 10 of them. And so if you actually wanted to find out if any were missing, you could, you could just do a, a yeah. little head count. They're the long ones. They're the long ones on the end. They're the primary flight feathers. They're, then the next are the secondaries, which are the groups that follow right after them. And that's the area on a, on a waterfowl that you would see brightly colored speculum is what it's mm -hmm. called, and it's the very iridescent feathers. And then the last group, which, uh, which is the tertials, and that's, we got primary, which is one, secondary, which is two, and tertial, which is three. And that's this last little group. Now, on, on upland game, they're kind of in, in uh, inconsequential, but waterfowl, they're actually a really kind of a, a, a nice group of feathers and important ones to have when you, when you actually mount a bird, a waterfowl. Especially in a flying pose. Oh yeah, and even Without in standing doubt. poses too, because some of those are they, they actually droop over the wing and it's very evident. Mm -hmm. uh, other groups of feathers, obviously, are the are the covert feathers, which are the next group up the up the hill here. And they, and I don't know how well you can see these, but it's this little group here. That's the primary coverts, secondary coverts. These three are the alula, which is the which is the thumb feather on on a bird's wing. It's right a on second, the end there. It's a little group all by itself. Next, if you move over to the tail, obviously you have the tail feathers and the tail coverts, which is this next group right above them. So the and coverts set on top of the. There, they make the blend from the from the from the basic body feathers into the into the tail or the basic wing feathers into the wing. So it's kind of a it's kind of a, a, an intermediate step. Uh, other groups of feathers that are important, especially on waterfowl and, and most upland game birds, are the side pocket feathers. And these feathers are something that, again, when you're looking, when you're assessing it, you want to make sure that these feathers are, are intact because a lot of the pattern of the bird is dictated by these wonderful. But I'm going to show you how to how to strip a wing here, and basically I'm working this down with my thumbnail, and I'm uh, I'm down to the elbow. I'm right at the part where the uh, radius and ulna are uh, starting, <coughs> and I'm. The humerus is um, this bone. Radius and ulna are the ones that are still concealed here. But uh, a lot of people have been taught to cut this humerus right off, and I don't really find that all that humerus. It, it's really uh, not a good idea. <laughs> it, you're going to lose. You're going to lose some very important pieces of reference. So uh, my theory is to try to recreate the inside as close to what it was before you took it apart as you can and uh, that should be uh, quite helpful in reassembling it if we have all those pieces in order like that. But I'm, I'm employing a little corn cob grit here just to give myself some traction so I can hold on to it and I'm just working this wing down and I'm separating the feathers from the ulna as we go. Once we're down to the wrist, we're then able to remove the muscle tissue simply by cutting, uh, cutting the tendons loose at their points of attachment and just uh, scraping, and I'm scraping with the back side of the scalpel here, scraping the meat from the area. We'll just continue cleaning this up. You now can start to see the, ex the uh, exposed radius and ulna bone. The ulna is the larger one, the radius is the smaller one. And again, be careful if you start to snip, not to snip uh, through that bone. I like to leave the, the knob on the end of this bone and we'll remove part of it later when we go to, to reassemble it, but uh, I want the entire length to, to be maintained there.
We're ready to uh, move back to the tail section and get the last little bit of meat out of that tail and tissue around. I use uh, little scrapers to scrape these tail feathers and, and uh, again I want to keep the, I want to keep the, uh, the actual feather butts intact but I, I do want to clean out in between them and if I find an area where there's that little bit of bone left in there I can maybe snip that center out or wiggle it out of there and then uh, employ the use of a, of a wire brush is pretty, pretty nice and actually I can come to this area on the wire wheel as well and, and work with it but to have a hand brush is um, offers a little bit more control than the wire wheel and it's I can uh, manipulate this tail section pretty nice with it. So, so got the eyes set, the neck is glued in. We're going to make a little bit of a craw on this neck and I'm going to do that with some jeweler's grade toe and this is the finest of all the toe type material. I'm just going to wad up a little bit of it here, not too much. Make a little bit of a craw. I don't want this guy to look hungry. So I'm kind of rolling up one end as I'm stringing it out on the other. On the other. and it's going to be fashioned in there, something like that. It is hot glue. Fasten the top part of it with a little bit of string. And that's what we're looking for. We want, we want a nice smooth run right off the front of the breast into the craw and up the neck. I want to have too much too much lumps and bumps and distortion there. And then this guy should fit right in here just lovely like and give us our nice neck head junction. Go ahead and cut that off. A little bit still sticking out so I'll Nip that a little bit lower yet. And I think we're ready to hot glue that in there. But I am going to smooth this in and fashion a little bit of the a little bit of the trachea and esophagus underneath the throat area. And I'm gonna smooth the transition from the head into the neck. And I think that should give us I can reach in there with a caulking gun and I'm going to caulk all around the drumstick up in here in the breast, sides of the breast, around the drumstick and the down along the just caulking is all around the, the leg Again, make sure that the body's square here after we've shook it all around. Meanwhile, I'm checking to make sure the side pocket and everything's going to line up good. Get my balance on the legs a little straighter.